What is up everybody? I'd like to welcome you guys all to the van comparison video. Now there's a million vans out there. There's schoolies and RVs and all different kinds of ways that you can live in something that resembles a van. I'm just here to compare and maybe help you if you're prospecting and trying to figure out which van is gonna be best for you. I'm gonna try and give you some of the technical specs, some of my thought processes and experiences that'll hopefully help you decide which of the three main high top vans are gonna be best for you now I'm not trying to exclude well I guess I am trying to exclude but with good reason there's a lot of different vans you can buy obviously there's a lot of low top vans all the vans that I'm gonna to describe today obviously the Sprinter the Transit and the ProMaster all three come in a high roof. With my experience, if you wanna live in a vehicle and be comfortable, especially in inclement weather, you need to have a high roof. You gotta be able to stand up. It's just one of those luxuries that I think you really have to have in order to be happy when living in a vehicle. With that being said, the low top ProMaster, the low top Transit, the low top Sprinter, are not gonna be considered in a lot of the specs that I give. I might mention some of them here and there, but I really wouldn't recommend living in a short van. If things like the Chevy Express, the Ford Econo line, you can put toppers on them so that you can stand up in them. That can be a great option. Sometimes it's cheaper as well, but with the money that you spend, the structural integrity that you sacrifice, the huge pain in the butt that it is to put one of those toppers on, I don't necessarily recommend it. With those short vans, I spent three weeks on a climbing trip in a Chevy Express van. They're like four and a half feet tall or something, maybe close to five feet interior height in the living space. And for like five days at the end of that climbing trip, it rained every single day. That sucks. You're literally hunched over, bent over on the bed, maybe sitting Indian style on the floor, or you're sitting in the seats that you've been sitting in for the past however many weeks or months or years or however long you're gonna live in a van. You don't wanna be sitting in those seats because that's where you sit all the time. You can't stand up. All you can do is really like lay in bed, hunch over, or sit in the seat that you sit in all the time when it's raining or when it's crappy outside. That's one of the huge reasons that when I built out a van to live in, I made sure it was a high top. I didn't care if it was expensive and I had to finance it. Height is a luxury that I could not go without. Moving on. There's gonna be these three vans that I go over. So the Sprinter, the ProMaster, and the Transit. Uh, they're made by Ram or Dodge, which the ProMaster is actually a Fiat Ducato that's imported by Chrysler. So it's not actually made by Dodge. They put a Chrysler engine in it, which is the gas motor. It's great. Then they have the Transit, which is made by Ford. Uh, the Transit is actually a very, very common van outside of the United States. It's relatively new in the US, but that's Ford's representation of the high top van. Both of these vans are basically their interpretation on the Sprinter. The Sprinter is made by by Sprinter, but it's made by Mercedes-Benz. It's also rebadged by Freightliner. They used to have a contract with Dodge where it was rebadged by Dodge, but that ended in 2014 or somewhere along those lines. I'm not, don't quote me on that. I'm not 100% sure when that took place. So you'd think that since the Sprinter is the grandfather and it's the one that everyone has kind of like modeled these types of vans after that they would all be identical or similar. And they are all pretty similar. They're all tall, relatively skinny. They come in different lengths with a lot of different options. We can go ahead and start with the Sprinter. I have some specs down here, believe it or not. I don't know all of these numbers just off the top of my head. Every wheelbase an inch wide and height and all the motor specs. If you gave me like a test, maybe I could do like 80%, but I just wanna make sure I'm not giving you guys any misinformation. So I'm gonna read off of my laptop some of these specs to make sure they're correct for you. Starting first with the Sprinter. I'm not gonna go back into the pre-2008 Sprinters where they actually have like two different wheelbases compared to what they have now. And they didn't have like all the emissions issues and all that other jazz. 
I'm going off of just vans from the last decade. If you're gonna build a vehicle that you wanna live in and you don't want it to break down, I recommend buying a newer vehicle. That should be common sense. Anyways, some people wanna buy something that's cheaper and fix it when it breaks. You could do that too. I don't recommend it. I like to buy things that are newer. Sometimes they come with a warranty. I bought both of my uh, ProMaster vans brand new from the factory. Then if something breaks, I don't have to worry about it. I just go to the dealership and they have to fix it because it's under warranty. That, that gives me peace of mind. Back to the Sprinter. They come in two different wheelbases. They come in the 144 inch wheelbase. For those of you that don't know at this point in the video, a wheelbase is how far the front tire at the center is from the back tire at the center. The longer your wheelbase, the larger your turning radius has to be. So 144 inches is the short Sprinter, 144 inch wheelbase. The living space in a 144 inch wheelbase Sprinter is 128 inches long. So a tad over 10 feet. That is what you get. They also have a 170 inch wheelbase Sprinter. The 170 inch wheelbase Sprinter also comes with another option, which is the extended body. So there's the 144, the 170, the 170 extended. The 170 regular, 170 inches of living space. So that's from the back of the seats all the way to the back of the van. That's like about 14 feet of living space. Now the extended 170 inch wheelbase, 185 inches. So that gives you an extra two feet, which is huge. That's enormous. That's, that, that's almost a bus. If you have a 170 extended, you don't fit in a parking space. I know this because it's a lot longer than our ProMaster and our ProMaster barely, pretty much doesn't fit in a parking space all the way, but I get away with it. The 170 extended, you're a bus. You're like almost out of the van category. In my mind, you are so long. It's probably like a huge pain to parallel park, to drive in tight cities, things like that. That's something you wanna keep in mind. The Sprinter's interior height is about six foot three inches, according to the spec sheet that I've got pulled up on the internet. And their interior width is 69 inches. So that's something to keep in mind. 69 inch wide, six foot, three inches tall, and then the three different lengths that I just talked about. So now I'm gonna keep going into the specs of the Transit and then the specs of the ProMaster. Then I'm gonna come back and talk about the different motors that all three offer. Then I'm gonna come back and talk about what I think are maybe some of the pros and cons of the three different vans to kind of help you decide. Moving on to the Transit. The Transit is the one that I absolutely know the least about, so I'm probably gonna have to read the most about it, so bear with me. The Transit, just like the ProMaster and the Sprinter, also come in two different wheelbases, one of those wheelbases having an extended body. That's also something you're gonna see. That's something you're gonna see with all three brands. Two wheelbases, three body sizes. So the first Transit comes with a 130 inch wheelbase. That is a very short wheelbase, excellent turning radius. That It's a really small van. Next size is a 148 inch wheelbase. And then you come with the 148 inch extended. This is basically, it's like an F-150. Like the wheelbase is very short. It's not like this big, long van or bus. It's a very short wheelbase with what appears to be a lot of the vehicle hanging over the rear axle, especially with the extended version. So with the 130 inch wheelbase, your living space is 118 inches. With the regular 148 inch wheelbase, it's a 129 inches. And then with the extended body in the Transit, 148 inch wheelbase, it is 158 inches of living space. So when you compare 158 inches of living space in the transit is as big as it gets. The 170 non-extended body Sprinter is 170 inches. So the medium sized Sprinter is longer than the biggest Transit that they make. The interior width of the Transit is 69 inches, exactly like the Sprinter. This is one difference though. If you're a very tall person, this could be a huge deciding factor for you. The Transit comes in three different heights. There's not just a low top and a high top. There's a low roof, a medium roof, and a high roof. Four foot eight, 
Nobody's gonna stand up in there. That's basically the low top. Then you can get one that is five foot 11. If you're not over six feet or maybe you're five nine or you're five 10, no one else that you're gonna live in the van with is taller than that. Maybe get the medium roof. It probably gets better gas mileage because it's shorter. You don't need all that extra space. Go for the medium roof. If you're a tall person, you can get the high roof or like the mega high roof. It is six foot eight inches. That's enormous. You can fit a full NBA player. Six foot eight inches is huge. I could probably, I could jump up and down like six inches inside that van. That is enormous. That's a huge plus for the Transit. All right, I already went over the 69 inch width for the Transit. Those are the three interior heights. Now we're gonna move on to the ProMaster. All right, the Ram ProMaster. Everybody thinks it's a Dodge. Ram is a Dodge. They're basically a separate company, but it's a, it's a Dodge Ram ProMaster, or it's a Ram ProMaster, or it's a Fiat Ducato, or it's a Peugeot Boxer or something. There's or a Renault. Some, uh, there's like 10 different brands in the world that rebadge this. So if you see it in Europe, it's gonna be a handful of different names in America. It's the Ram ProMaster, also in Canada. Anyways, it is different from the other two vans in my perspective. Obviously, I own one, so take my opinion for what it may be. The Ram ProMaster is a big minivan. Front wheel drive V6. I mean, you look at the shape of it, you're like, wow, that looks like a giant minivan. It essentially is. There's pros and cons that come with that. We're gonna get into those later. I'm trying to stick to schedule, and I'm talking about the sizes of the van. It comes in a 136 inch wheelbase. That is the regular wheelbase, has a great turning radius. It's slightly longer than the smallest transit. Then you have 159 inch wheelbase. The 159 inch wheelbase also comes with an extended body. So those are the three different sizes. The 136 inch wheelbase interior living space is 112 inches, pretty small. Then you're gonna come 159 inch wheelbase ProMaster comes with a 132 inch living space. Then the 159 inch wheelbase extended body has 146 inches of living space, which is pretty huge, but it's not monstrous. If you've been keeping track or you've been writing these numbers down, or maybe you're just really good with numbers and you've remembered all these, the extended ProMaster is actually the smallest of all the extended vans or the shortest of all the extended vans. That's probably why when people ask us, is your van too big? It's the extended model. Do you have trouble finding parking? Is it like driving a bus? Not really, it's like driving a long truck, I guess. It's also, like I just said, the shortest of all the extended van. One of the huge benefits to having a ProMaster is the Transit and the Sprinter are both 69 inches wide. The ProMaster's interior width is 73 inches. So you get four inches of extra width, totally awesome. Then it has two interior heights. The low roof is five foot four inches. The high roof is six foot two inches. If you remember, that's one inch shorter than the Sprinter and like six inches shorter than the Transit. If you're six feet tall, the ProMaster works just fine. At six foot two, I've never had an issue. I'm six one. This is also going from the interior of the ribs. This isn't going from like the sheet metal. So after I built in a roof and whatnot, I don't have any issues with it. One of the other dimensions that I kind of want to go over is exterior height dimensions. With the high roof, we're going to go over the different heights of the three vehicles. So say you want to get the six foot eight interior height of the transit that comes with a price. The exterior height of the vehicle, 110 inches, which is like pretty freaking tall. The ProMaster comes in at 100 inches. It's actually the shortest of the high top bands, and I'll tell you why in a second. Then you're gonna have 108 inches is the Sprinter exterior height. The reason that the ProMaster is so short, even though it has the high top capabilities, is because it's front wheel drive. There's no need to send a drive line to a rear axle in the rear, so the actual living space and the body can be lower to the ground because there's no drive shaft that has to go through it. The Transit and the Sprinter, both are rear wheel drive. They both have a drive shaft, so the body has to be higher up. Therefore, the top of the high roof has gotta be way up in the air. You're talking about eight and 10 inches taller without even putting solar panels or anything like that on top of it, a roof vent, makes a huge deal. That's also one of the reasons that I really appreciate the ProMaster. Since there's no drive shaft and the body itself can be lower to the ground, the entire van is shorter. 
your center of gravity is also lower. Obviously, since the ProMaster's front wheel drive and it's a giant minivan, you're not gonna be doing a ton of off-roading, but if you do get into some hairy situations that are off-road and you're tilting to one side, probably the first one to tip over is gonna be the Transit and that's because it's the tallest and the Sprinter will be short behind and the ProMaster with its lower center of gravity will most likely be the van to tip over last. That's important for me because we do try to go off on some dirt roads here and there. Sometimes they're kind of sketchy. Last thing you wanna do is tip your house on its side. That's gonna absolutely destroy your van. Moving on to motor options. All three vans come with multiple motor options. The Sprinter, as of the time I'm making this video, I've heard that they're gonna release a gas engine. I have no idea whether that's true or not. It could just be a rumor. They offer two different diesel engines. They are the Blue Tech diesel engine. There's a four cylinder and a six cylinder. They both get good gas mileage. They're both reliable. They both run forever. That's what everyone will tell you. Most of the people that I know that drive Sprinters have had issues with them that cost thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars. They can only be worked on by Sprinter mechanics you most of the time have to take them to a Mercedes dealership. They're a problematic vehicle that's really expensive to fix. Don't, don't hate me, these are just the facts. Maybe it's my opinion, I don't know. Tear me up in the comments if you think sprinters are great and I'm an idiot. The ProMaster offers a V6 gas engine and a four cylinder diesel motor that is a Fiat motor that can only be worked on at the dealership. You run into the same problem with this diesel engine that you run into with the sprinter. It also has a manual transmission that is electronically shifted by a computer. That is a very complicated thing for most people to understand. You're like, so it's an automatic transmission. No, an automatic transmission operates entirely different than a manual shifted gearbox. This is a manually shifted gearbox. There's basically a little electronic robot that shifts it for you when you tell it to extremely overcomplicated. Fiat, I don't know what they were thinking when they created that, but it's extremely expensive to fix when it goes bad. The same problem you run into with the Sprinter, like I said before. Now the Transit actually comes with the most options. You can get a gas V6, you can get the EcoBoost, which is a twin turboed gas V6, or you can get a Power Stroke inline five cylinder turbo diesel. Those options are awesome. We went with the gas V6 in the ProMaster because if it breaks, it's a Chrysler V6. It's a V6 that goes in a bunch of minivans. Of course, parts are cheap. Of course, everyone can work on it. That was a lot of my reasoning for going with the ProMaster because it's cheap to fix, it's easy to fix, and anybody can fix it. Now, the Transit, I've heard things that they're a little bit unreliable. They have sensor issues. They have this issue. They have that issue. I don't know. I've never owned one. I don't know anybody personally that's had a lot of issues. I've just had a lot of people tell me that have done a lot of research. I'm worried about the throttle body issue. I'm worried about this sensor issue. Maybe they have a bunch, bunch of issues that I don't know about. I do think if you're looking for a powerful drivetrain, the EcoBoost from the Ford Transit definitely takes the cake. It has way more torque. It has way more horsepower than any of the diesel engines. However, the Power Stroke inline five, I believe is also a very good platform. Either of those engines would be a pretty cool option to have. If I had to build out a Transit, I would definitely go with the EcoBoost and I think I would be happy with it. So like I mentioned before, the ProMaster is front wheel drive, which means there's really no option for you to get four wheel drive or all wheel drive. There's definitely not an option for you to add it because if you are mechanically inclined and you understand how a transfer case would be added or worked, you can't do that with a front wheel drive vehicle. It's just not gonna happen. With the Sprinter, you do get four wheel drive options. So if you wanna spend the extra cash when you buy the Sprinter from the factory or you wanna find a used one that's four wheel drive, that makes an awesome overlanding vehicle. Really, there's nothing like having four wheel drive. If you're stuck in the mountains, you kick it into four low, you pull yourself out, everything's great. That's invaluable in a lot of scenarios. The Transit only comes in rear wheel drive, but I have heard of a lot of shops that will convert it to a four wheel drive vehicle for you. However, it comes with a price tag of something like 10 or $11,000. So if you're just like filthy rich 
and you wanna do that, more power to you, but most people building out a van are not gonna spend 10 or $11,000 to make it four wheel drive. They're probably just gonna buy a Sprinter. And if four wheel drive is super important to you, the Sprinter is probably your only option. All right, so the next thing that I'm gonna move on to is gonna be pricing. So these are going to be the cheapest prices that you're gonna get for one of these three vans. And that means the shortest wheelbase, the lowest roof, no factory options, the base cargo van MSRP. So when looking at the Sprinter for 2019, Mercedes-Benz Sprinter, $39,790 is literally as cheap as you're going to get. Now, if you get the extended wheelbase with four wheel drive and the high roof and all the factory options, it's gonna be like $60,000, maybe 58 or 59, I don't know, but it's gonna be in that range. Sprinters are gonna be sky high as far as price go. The next one you're you're gonna move on to Ford Transit 2019. This isn't the Connect because the Connect is obviously like a little tiny minivan thing. This is the Ford Transit, the actual big cargo van. It will be the shorter wheelbase, it will be the low roof, will not have any factory options. Base MSRP $34,085. That is as cheap as it's gonna get. I know if you want to do uh, Eco Boost or the turbo diesel and you want to do the ultra high roof and get all the factory options and all the bells and whistles it's going to be 45 to 55 thousand dollars you're going to be kind of in that same range next moving on to the promaster the promaster is going to be the cheapest of the three with the low roof and the short wheelbase and no factory options base msrp is going to be thirty thousand three hundred and forty five dollars i know the msrp on our van and it doesn't even have all the factory options and you could add the turbo diesel motor which is a five thousand dollar upgrade our van's msrp was like forty three thousand dollars you could easily pay fifty thousand dollars or msrp could easily be fifty thousand dollars on a ram pro master that had all the bells and whistles and the upgraded engine and whatever else I don't recommend the diesel engine, like I mentioned before, huge pain in the butt, expensive to fix, not really worth it. So this is kind of gonna conclude the video. I tried to give you guys as many specs and options and all the different things about the three different vans to try and help you decide. I'm not gonna go and say which van I think is the best or which van I think is the worst or what your application might be. That's for you to decide. I went with the Ram ProMaster in two of my vans because the gas mileage was good, the turning radius is great, it's got the low center of gravity, and it's the cheapest. And it's one of the easiest to build in because the walls are square. That's another thing that you really wanna keep in mind. At the end of the day, it's really gonna come down to what options you want the most. If you really wanna have the EcoBoost motor where you get a ton of power and you can drive it like a hot rod, but it's still your house, then maybe you wanna go with the Transit. There's one thing that the Mercedes-Benz Sprinter offers that none of the other vans offer besides four-wheel drive and that is swag, being cool. I mean, everybody wants to drive a Mercedes. It's German engineering, it's awesome, it's beautiful, it's comfortable, everybody wants it. There's one requirement that I have for buying a Mercedes-Benz Sprinter, and that is you have to be able to afford two Mercedes-Benz Sprinters because they break down a lot, they're really expensive to fix. Something that might be a minor fix that's a couple hundred dollars for another van or another type of vehicle is gonna cost you thousands of dollars at a Sprinter dealership to get fixed. That's just something you wanna keep in mind when you're prospecting which van to buy. I think that covers it all. If you guys have any other questions, please leave them down in the comments. I've had a really long, exciting time making this video. I did this all in one take. It's been probably an hour of me standing, yelling at the camera, so my voice is dry. I'm pretty much tired. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Please smash the like button if you found anything in the video useful, or if you just could tell that I'm trying really hard, you could hit the like button as well. I'd really appreciate it. Please subscribe to Trent and Alley, and I will see you guys on the next one. Thank you and goodbye.